Welcome back to Boy Band Break, where we encourage you to take a break from your day and join us in some great boy band conversation. As always, my name is Diane. I'm Chinzia. And I'm Lydia, a.k.a. Mama Lou. We are missing Soph again this week, but we will see her back f- next week. Woo! Woo! All right. Uh, Chinzia, oh, in her absence, do you have yes, uh, any I birthdays? Yes, I have a birthday. Uh, from in real life, we have Michael Connor Woo! on June seventh, and he is turning twenty. Yay! Yay! He's the same age as Millennium. That's oh, terrifying. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> well, that, thank you for putting that into perspective, Diane. It's and very uh, wholesome. Uh, um, s- scary. I now feel old. That's yes, great. Thank you. I Thanks feel like that. a grandmother. <laughs> um, Anyways, on to the topic of today. And, you know, speaking of joining us in the conversation, you can get in contact with us. You can send us a tweet on Twitter. You can send us a message on Instagram. You can send us a message on Facebook. You can leave comments on the SoundCloud page for this podcast. You can email us. You can email us. Boybandbreak at gmail.com. So the topic for today's podcast comes to us from a lovely DM that we received on Instagram from a guy named Tony. And you see what Tony did? He DM'd us. Yay. Thanks, Tony. And it was a very nice message about how he liked the podcast. And he asked if we would do uh, an episode on together. (gasps) <gasps> and so here we are. Chinzia, yeah, your time is coming together. You and me forever. It's this simple, people. You make a request, you let us know, and here we are. Ah, Tony, thank you. And Tony, just so you know, uh, you also he also asked if we would talk about um, LFO and the specifically like the Rich Cronin interview uh, on Howard uh, Stern. Yes, uh, we've done that. So go back to our uh, Lou Pearlman episode. Our first Lou Pearlman episode, not the boy band con one, the one that's just like specifically about Lou. And we talk all about it there. So, so yes, check that out. We love that interview. Like I am obsessed with that. When Gina uh, introduced it to me and I was just like, this is just like gold. We went to her house and we watched it for like hours and we're like even like on repeat like we were in like our pajamas we're like this is like this is such a good best gorilla suit of all time oh, man so that was, was really wonderful. good absolutely wonderful so well, yeah so if if anyone hasn't heard that yet uh go back and listen I to that episode this. and then pop back to this one I'm trying to remember what episode number it is but i don't but if you go to our facebook page we have a pinned post that actually tells you what each episode is and all of a uh, little brief synopsis of each of them it's episode Just, 15 Thank you. Ah, thank you, Diane. <coughs> so, so together. On to together. Oh, yes, this yes. is so exciting. And yes. I feel like I'm not prepared because I've been wanting to do a together episode. And then I. Chinzia, you have it all up in here. It's all in, in the there. Canyon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it all out. So for all people right. who don't know, who is together? together oh you know you no no no, this is your this is your baby this is like okay so together is a fictitious boy band created by mtv so they did a documentary um about putting this band together it's not a real documentary it's a mockumentary if you will and then the mockumentary did so well that they ended up making a tv show and i believe there was two seasons yeah um, and then it ended because and two one, albums as well two albums yep so one was the movie soundtrack and one was a second one i think it was called together again yes um and it's just like it's just such a great band so obviously they based it on lou perlman and like yeah backstreet boys and nsync so it was about this guy bob buss and he like put together this band and he heard uh, jerry o'keefe singing and whatever so they kind of like it was them like getting this band together and then like they and, all like, have their all individual the stereotypes, types yes. the stereotypes so um so can you go through like who are the members of the band and then like do you remember the, all the actors names who played them uh uh-huh. Absolutely in one will. moment we will wikipedia will tell us but uh okay so if i recall so it was movie first and then tv show so yeah so the movie was first and it was was it a movie like it wasn't a movie in the theaters right no, no. it was just like on mtv it was, like, how did we TV. i guess and i guess they got it on much music because we watched it on there obviously because we mtv was not in canada at the time no um so it's together with the number two uh and yeah so the past members were evan farmer so he played Jerry O'Keefe. So he was the heartthrob, if you will. 
Then there was Noah Bastian. So he played Chad Linus, and he was the shy one. He is. Um, Kevin Farley. <laughs> actually, brother. This is actually Chris Farley's brother. Chris Farley, yeah. And he was um, an overweight old, gentleman who was brother. losing Bald. hair and stuff. So he was... Uh, he, yes, so he was the older brother type, and he's actually Chad's brother. Yes. What's his name in the show? Uh, Doug Linus. Oh, okay. Uh, and he's divorced and has, like, two kids or whatever. Then we have Alex Solowitz. So he played Mickey Puck, who was, like, your bad boy. The mm-hmm. rapper type. He I think they a... actually found him at a skate park, if I recall correctly. Yes. Yes. And then, and then Michael Cuzioni. And he played QT. Jason QT McKnight. So he was, like, the young one <laughs> who was, like... Always wanting a girlfriend or making out with people and stuff like that. And he really didn't. But he he had a sickness. So that was his thing. So he was also like he would he had a fake disease. I can't remember what it was like. He would like faint after like too much stuff or too much stress or whatever. Um, um, and then in real life, he actually had cancer, leukemia, died. I believe. And then he died. Yeah. Um, so I yeah, think that's right. why they they, um, they had to stop. Production. They stopped it. And then there was a, rumors like two or three years ago that they were going to do a possible reunion, Ooh. which was like super exciting for me. Um, and I think they did like a TMZ interview or something. Like I remember actually seeing the four members together, but then nothing actually came of that hmm. that I know of, which is super sad. Well, like wasn't we'll, we'll one of into... them one of them was in jail, right? Uh, no, so no. chat. So sorry, or um, rehab. Yes, rehab. very very so bad Noah rehab. Bastian, um, Bastian, I don't know how to say his name. He went through a, like, so during the height of Together, they actually were like on MTV awards and going out to places and they met all the other celebrities like Britney and Christina and everything. So they were actually being treated as a real like boy band, celebrity boy band. Yeah. And then after the show got canceled, then it was just kind of like whatever. It kind of like, you know, dissolved, dissolved. into uh, uh, obscurity. Which yeah. He, didn't well, he did not well. take well, so he yeah. got into drugs. Um, and then his brother was going to make a documentary about like his recovery. So I there and it was before GoFundMe. I think it was. It might have been a Kickstarter. I can't yeah, remember. I so I remember I did pay money to try to like did did this, and then they had started it, and then I don't really know what then happened. Then he there. like he went back on the back bandwagon there. Off the wagon? Off the wagon. I don't know. So his brother, like, he didn't want... Fell off the wagon? Yeah, Yeah. so he didn't really want to participate, so then he didn't. So they just didn't make the documentary, which is sad. But hopefully he's doing well. So now you're out five bucks. I think Mm. I paid, like, 25 bucks, but still. It was just... Yeah, I don't know. It just feels bad. It's just... Because the years they were active was 99 to 2001. So it's a very short time period, right? But, like... Like it's just kind of like like where there's smoke, there's fire. It's just like suddenly you're famous and then suddenly you're not, right? So he which just the Backstreet it. Boys did talk about in the documentary, but with the Backstreet Boys, all the people were still there, and obviously they're still. And music. I feel like with for like bands like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, it was a slower rise a little bit. It wasn't yeah. just like hey, we're gonna make this movie and see what happens. Right, exactly. They had put a lot of work into it. They had been in Europe first, Training. whatever, and then yeah, it was this like craziness for a few years, and then yes, the like the floor kind of dropped out from under mm. them, and they had to like Backstreet Boys had to like you know work their way back up back up to where they are now. But um, Backstreet's back. Yeah. But yeah, and as we had said previously, like boy band music is kind of cyclical. So yeah. that was around the time where it was kind of like weaning down, down a little bit. Yeah. So like making the band was already out and stuff. So it was kind of almost like a making the band type thing and uh, whatever. So so that was the so the documentary was them getting together to get this record deal. They go down to Miami. They perform. There was another band that was called Whoa, I think. And with their hit site title, Rub One Out. Rub One Out. <laughs> and uh, so there was a lot of really funny things in it this show. So good It was show. a good comedy. So and then the episodes, when it got to the series, they were about half an hour long episodes. And they touched on a variety of things. Um, for example, like, so Jerry, the heartthrob, had a girlfriend. So they had to, like, hide the fact that he had a girlfriend. And that was, like, a thing. Then um, <laughs> there's this one episode where... Sorry. Where Mickey Park decides he needs to be more badass, so he wants to look like Stone Cold Steve Austin, oh so he God. starts wearing like leather chaps and stuff. It just, it just does not, it does not make a manly look. And then uh, another episode, uh, Chad 
uh, something had happened to Chad or whatever, and fans were like spying into. So they all lived together in a house, right? So that, similar in, to like the Lou Pearlman. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. then th- the fan had spread a rumor that Chad was sick and then he had died. So then it was like Chad was dead, but he was still alive. So then they're like, "Oh, the record sales are going through the roof now that you're dead, Chad." Like so. So then he had to like lay low for like a little while. Was that QT was dead? No. So oh. then QT got pissed off that Chad was <laughs> dead because he was supposed to be the sick one. Yes. So yes. then. He was like getting mad, and it was just. I think oh, you made just, me watch that episode. Uh, and then I don't wasn't know. There's some girl. So then he, he had he like, had made his dream girl, and then when he was like watching the news reports about his death, the dream girl was like there, and he's like, "Oh my god, it's dream girl!" So then he like came back to life, but then she didn't like him anymore because he, he was, was alive. alive and- she liked the idea of him, and now so it was just. Uh, so yeah, so they got into like shenanigans and stuff. Like, didn't, so. Wasn't like Doug dating like uh, the lady? Uh, the yes. Label lady? So I tried oh, to show them like that she episode. Made me watch that one, too. and <laughs> they were not a fan of that episode. So, uh. which it wasn't one of the greatest episodes, but no, kind of better. like yeah, that was yeah. So kind she of was like, like this the, is hilarious. And Sophia and I were like, mm-hmm. so Liz was the chick from the record label, and she had a crush on Doug, and was like, and Doug was like, oh my god, this Liz chick is really hot, and he was like sleeping with her and stuff. But he didn't realize that she slept with a member of each of the boy bands to keep them relevant. So, like, you had to, like, sacrifice one boy band member to her yeah. to, like, to keep your popularity going. <laughs> Mama so then, so that, Yeah. So, essentially, that was it. But they tried to make it less creepy by having her be a woman instead of a uh, man in man. gorilla suit. So, uh, yeah. So, that was that. So, and they had a couple of, like, and some songs were... Some songs were really like joke songs. Obviously, like the hardest part of breaking up is getting, getting back, back your stuff, stuff. and like th- you and you and me together, together we, make we make three. three. And it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like. But they also had some like nice songs, like Howie from Backstreet Boys wrote that one song. Can we go never over remember. the discography? Oh, um, I don't know. Well, where, where do you want to? Okay, where do you want to so put this? Yeah, yeah. Just... Let's let's. Uh, okay, so why don't you just tell me what do you what was your favorite together song? Oh, there's so many. There's so them. many. They well, had two albums. Yeah, no, but they were like all like, bangers. They were yeah, good they were. songs. <laughs> they were like okay. This okay, was... while you're thinking, can you answer me this question? Okay, sure. was it really those actors singing, or were there other people singing uh, that they I'm just? Pretty sure it was them. Okay, I think so it they was could them. have been a real like because Michael. I know he was like a professionally trained singer, um, QT, and yeah, no, I think it was them singing. I'm like 99% sure it was them singing. So they were kind, even though they were portraying a boy band and they didn't like properly, like they kind of became a real boy band. Oh, and they actually apparently opened for Britney Spears' 2000 uh, summer tour. That's That's huge. Appearing in character. So like that's huge for for a boy band. For real. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Howie wrote Every Minute, Every Hour. Yes. Which was actually Every Hour. hour, I just can't get get you out of my mind. mind. Oh, that was so uh, their hit, their breakout single in the movie is "You Plus Me Equals Us Calculus," mm-hmm. and it was like "You Plus Sign Me Equals Sign Us," and then it was just like it was just very cheesy and wonderful. And then like Doug went and got braces again to be like more youthful because he was the older brother one, kind of like Chris from Sync when he had braces. And, like it was just mm-hmm. it was just very funny. And being a big fan of boy bands, it like it perfectly like encompassed. So you don't have a favorite song. Um, well, okay, here, let me let me read them to you so that you remember what they were okay. because there's just so many and like they were bangers. Like I mean and this was okay. Also let let me preface this. This was at a time iTunes did not exist. So when you bought an album, you listened to the entire album like five times. So then like suddenly you started to like every song that was there. So like nowadays like you know with with iTunes, uh, you just pick purchase a song you like and you don't even give the album a chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like yeah, it's true. It's kind of Kind of so like most of their songs, the, so the show and the movie and the TV series and many of their songs are written by Brian and Mark Gunn. I don't know if they've written other things, but also other boy banders and stuff have written for them. All right. So here's the track listing for the Together. This was their very first album uh, released in 2000. Um, so there was Together, like the song. Uh, you plus me equals us, Calculus. Uh, rub one out from Woe. <laughs> um, say it, don't spray it. Uh, oh. Well, say, say it. Don't spray it. I, I want, want the news. news. I want the news. Not, Not the, the weather. weather. That was good. Um, <laughs> before we say goodbye, okay. then we have Visualize, which was QT solo. Um, then we have You're My Baby Girl, Breaking All the Rules from Unity. 
Um, then you plus me equals us calculus dream master club remix and then we have rub one rub one out which was the karaoke version from woe plus you the star ah so very nice that was the first one i think honestly i think i like the second album better yeah i think so too so to, uh, the second album was together again and mm-hmm. that was also released in 2000 so two albums in one year wow That's very impressive so i mean when you have a lot of financial backing it makes it a little bit easier mm-hmm. so and of course they had to hit the hype while it was hot right so anyway so this particular um track listing um they had five gather was the we are five <laughs> together we, we do, do our thing bang bang that sing that was a good one uh the hardest part of breaking up is getting back your stuff i made an animated uh thing in, for class and had that in there that is wonderful yes. like that's like <laughs> The hardest part of breaking up is getting back your stuff, which was very like <laughs> heartfelt. The cat. It's oh, they true. stole a yeah, cat. Stole okay, the cat. I was like, did you got just my? Meow? He says you got my sweaters, my hat. I can't find my cat. cat. Meow. Uh-huh. <laughs> just like so good. the video is really good for that too. So good. Yeah, it's a good video. Oh, They're at like a used car dealership, and there's yes, this, yes, like, and then like I can't believe I went out with the kleptomaniac. So like good, mm, good song. Okay. Then we have Every Minute, Every Hour. It was more of a soft, yeah, it was a nicer nice song. I think that was in the Doug Liz episode. That was uh, like when you when you had lunch with Howie. He was like, I wrote the nice song. Yeah, but that wasn't his, the song. Oh, nope. that was the song. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was the song. song. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Howie didn't remember what song he wrote for them, but he's like, no, I wrote a nice song. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, you and you and me, together we make three. He's like, no. And then I'm like naming all these. I was like, I wrote the nice song. <laughs> <laughs> <Poor> <laughs> so we're like, okay, thanks, Howie. Oh, that was my God. funny. Um, then the next song is That's When I'll Be Gone. That was like a song. That was like a song. slow, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome Lover. Awesome oh. Love. Is that where they kind of go through and say each of their individual personalities? Um, I think so. Yes, I think that was. So they're like kind of like go through and they're like, like kind of talk about how they're their own like. Oh, why I they're an remember. awesome lover. Yes, why they would be an awesome lover. Like, oh, geez. like Doug's like, oh, because I'm like, I put your needs in front of others. And like, because he's older and more mature. And then like QT was like, I make out with my hand. I don't know. It was yes, just like, it was just yes. like a bizarre. Was so funny. Like, that was good. Chad was very shy. And like, yeah. so it was just, it was just pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then I gave my 24 7 to you. That was a slow kind of ballad. That's the one in the Liz I one. I gave my 24 7 to you. And then we have Right Where It Counts. That was a good one. Right, right where, where it counts, counts that's, that's where, where you hit me. Right, right where it counts, I'm on my knees. Right where it counts, stop, stop hitting me, please. Right where it counts. Um, sister, that, that was, was a naughty song. song. So it's uh, so if you're listening to it, you're like, oh, this is very nice and slow ballady. And then you realize that Sing- he's cheating on her with, with her, her sister. sister. Oh, God. He's like, I I didn't realize she was your sister. Yes. Oh, my God. Your yes. little sister. That yes. Was, yes. That was, oh, my God. Um, it was a different time. It was, yes. Yeah, so it was funny. Yes. Um, the way you do me. Girl, Girl the you way. way you do me makes me say what's up. What's up? Yeah, remember? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Okay, that was a great one. That is like a good Down banger as well. Up. There we go. Um, you're the only one that's real. Uh, I don't know if I remember that one. Uh, Mikey, I think, sang that one. Okay. And then I want to know your name. I want to know your name. I want to know what everything about, about you. you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You and you and me. <laughs> Together, Together we make, make three. three. And then um, regular guy. That was that was more like a mic. Sometimes I just want to smash things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah that was a weird it was song. Like, it's, like, it's like, I'm a regular guy. Stay out of trouble. Regular guy says ma'am on the double. And then like, then it, so it's like very like soft. And then it goes into like this hard rock. And then it goes back to the soft. <laughs> and just because he's like trying to be nice, but he's like, meh. Like he's just like yeah, crazy. he's just a mess. And then on the alternate pressing, that's when I'll be gone. Okay, I remember uh, that was well. Was number 14. Yes. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. They're they're all pretty good. They're all really like good. The singles no were good. Yeah, I don't know. Do you have a so favorite probably... episode of the show? Oh, I don't know. Probably probably the one where he dies, like where Chad dies, and QT's mad at him, and QT doesn't like to swear anything, so he calls him a mother ducking ducker, and he's like giving him like half the finger and stuff like that, so that was, I don't know. What I don't do know. know. Um... I like the movie a the lot. The movie more. was really yeah. good. I liked the movie because it was very documentary style. Yes. So, like, at one point, 
I, they went over the fangirls because they stop. They're like driving through the night on their tour bus and they stop at a gas station. Yes. And Woe is there. And yes. they're like, oh, hey, Woe. Like, you know, we're big fans of you as well. And the guys were just like complete D bags. Yeah. And like the girls want to take pictures with them. And then they end up like just being ridiculous and like stealing chips and like telling yeah, them all to screw mean. off and being mean to them. So this girl who's like a big fan of Woe was all upset. So then like together starts like singing to her and stuff. And then she gets all excited and she like converts over to a together fan. And it's just. I liked when they do like the kind of the Lou Pearl style training where like they oh like that was funny and, like, that was they, great like, start throwing like uh like things at them like while they're dancing so there's like a whole bunch they're like who dance and they start like throwing stuffed animals yeah. at them <laughs> and they're like whatever and it's just trying to like dodge and stuff and they're like hey what's your favorite color blue he's like well what's your favorite color blue no you can't you can't play blue <laughs> no what if some girl and her favorite color is purple and none of you like purple and none of you like her so you need to pick a different color yeah it's just like it was just like robin's so egg good. blue like it's just like <laughs> it was awesome it was um, so good it was like a perfect satirical uh take on boy bands and it, like it was very well well researched well done um and and yeah i mean they obviously got a somewhat of a career out of it i think um jerry o'keefe is still like he was doing stuff with hgtv for a while yeah. as well yeah he was um, yeah trade was he on trading spaces he was on um, one of those home reno shows like he was like a host of a, a host of oh okay so like and he's still like he was probably the only one who came out on top mm-hmm. um because like qt did and then linus had what is drugs. his real name's not jerry o'keefe Right? No, his real name is Evan Farmer. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's done some acting and stuff. Well, if you know what Evan Farmer has been up to, so, leave us a comment. I thought he was with the Backstreet Boys because there was a security <laughs> guard, and I was like, that guy looks like Jerry O'Keefe. Guard. I don't know what he does. He's someone who knows Howie. Yeah, he's been to a bunch of events, and I always see yeah. this guy. He doesn't, now that I've seen him multiple times, he doesn't look like him, oh, but okay. it was just like, she's like, it looks like old Jerry O'Keefe. Oh. And then, well, this is the best Papa part. O'Keefe. So, Jerry O'Keefe's girlfriend. I was just like... In the show or in real life? In the show. Okay. Erin was her name in the show. I don't remember what her name is in real life. But I just like... And again, it's been like 20 years since I had seen this show. Okay, I guess a little less. Maybe like 15 years. And I'm just like flipping the channels. And then I just like... And I'm like falling asleep. And then I hear her voice. Jerry O'Keefe's girlfriend. What's going on? And she was on The Closer, I want to say. And I was just like, what? And I'm like... Yeah, so... Um, Yeah, no. I really... My main thing is that they never actually released the TV show onto DVD. Yeah, or that anywhere. Was annoying. So that's really annoying to me, and I really want to rewatch these episodes, but I can't because they're not available. So if anyone has any pull, any pull, or has any like bootleg copies of this or old VHS tapes that you've taped or whatever, and you would like to send them to me, or I will buy them off of you, I just I really want to rewatch the entire series. Like there's a couple of episodes that are online because I think they did like a best of series thing, but mm. they don't have them all out. And it's really bothering me. So I feel like they played them a lot more in the States on MTV. So yeah, perhaps yeah. We only got like, we get like MTV's like sloppy seconds. We're like, nim, 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 give it to me, please. Nim, nim, nim. But like even now, like much music's kind of defunct at this point. So like yeah. all we have to rely on is the internet. So, Just the yes. interwebs. Do you have a favorite member of Together? Can Jerry O'Keefe was one? definitely the most attractive, I would say. I don't know. Linus was cute. Chad? I mean, Chad. Because they're both like Linus. Yeah, sorry, Chad. Because I'm like, is Doug your Chad, favorite? No, no. I mean, Chad, Doug, I like Chad a lot. I really like Chad a lot. Good. But just like... Mickey Park was really definitely the Danny Wood of the group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. What about Doug? No, no was, Mickey Park was yeah. uglier than Doug. Yeah, there was what? like... There was like some Justin Ramen Noodle hair and like smooth face. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a pug? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, like, I liked him because he was badass, but I think like I liked... Blindness? Chad. Chad. His name was Chad. Chad. Chad was very into Star Wars and things like that. Cute. Like he, he was, was just he was like so shy. He was so just cute. so shy and cute. And, and oh, and in the documentary, they're like, "Oh, how much money do you think?" He's like, "We're gonna make a buttload, buttload of, of money. money." And they're like, "How much is a buttload?" He's like, "About a thousand dollars." I base that on the fact that <laughs> one, one time, time I stuck five dollars up my butt, and not to brag or anything, but I can fit way, way more, more up there. there. Way, way more. It's <laughs> just like, like oh, so and he was like, say stupid shit, and then like. Doug would be like, okay, Chad, like, whatever. And, like, and he would, he was very scared, like, shy and stage frighty and stuff. So, Chad, uh, so Doug so would have to That's why the help big him. brother was there. Like, it was oh. really sweet. That's essentially, it was like a two it's for like one deal. John and Jordan Knight. It is, exa- exactly. Aww. Except that John's the shy one. But yeah, so it's like, even though he's to older have, than Jordan. Yes. yes. So they needed to have the brother in there. So, like, I guess it also plays on new kids as well. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but yeah, QT was cute. He was very cute. And then, yeah, Jerry O'Keefe, I guess. 
Okay, so on this, so together was kind of then, like from what I, like I said, Shinzia, I think made me watch the movie once, but that was like years ago. And then like recently, since we've started this podcast, she's been like, you have to watch these episodes of Together. And I'm like, okay, but I don't know. It's just like not my thing. Maybe because I'm 34 years old, but whatever. I'm um, 34 <laughs> years old. I watched it with you. That's why. You were my influence. Oh, so No, good. but Damn like it. if you watched it now, I mean, oh. having never seen it before. Oh, okay. Do you think like. Are you saying it wouldn't age well? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I would just... I just fashion. Fashion's fashion definitely off. It, it could have been sort of the stepping stone and the, like, inspiration for, like, for example, your Jonas Brothers shows, like the yeah. Camp Rock thing. Mm-hmm. But Jonas Brothers didn't play themselves either, right? Were they, they played, like, a version of themselves, so they have the same name. I think they had different last names. Yeah, didn't they have a different last name? Are so you it talking was still, about the Jonas Brothers show or Camp Rock? Because I never watched either. it. Either. The Jonas Brothers show, they had the same first names, but I think they had a fake last name. That's what I was thinking um, as well. And then they did Jonas, and then Jonas Brothers, and then Jonas L.A. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then they go to L.A., which is... Because then there good. was also, around that same t- time period, Big Time Rush. Yes. I've watched and a few of those episodes m- more recently, like about two years ago, because they were playing on, I don't know, Family Channel or something like that, or Nickelodeon or something. So... Yeah, I just it's it's more about the cheese factor. So again, they also play I think they play fake names in that but one. But they were rush. I think it's a similar thing. Mm-hmm. So it kind of like follows them in their day-to-day lives and then you'll see like randomly like girls will be screaming and following them but then they kind of do their own little like thing. Yeah, cuz Yeah. And they play themselves though. So the band it, it's kind of similar to Together in that yes. the band was really called Big Time Rush. They played themselves it wasn't like actors playing singers like all the like james maslow and carlos penna carlos pen well i Penega. think at the time his name was carlos penna and then yes. him and his wife did that weird thing where they but like they combine the names yes yeah yes yes so there was four of them though i think yeah so and they were living in a hotel and they were getting their record like thing together yeah so yeah. i just i just really like watching sitcoms about bands and but stuff. Di- wasn't there something else with big time rush i'm trying to look it up but like weren't they a boy band but also like on a hockey, hockey players, team or yes. something that was yeah. the concept of it they were like hockey players from like minnesota or something but then i don't actually know how they became singers in a band so maybe yeah i didn't watch enough room? episodes our friend deli like follows them all the time Oh really? She's like a big fan of them for we sure. We could have Deli on the show. Probably could if we ever do like a phone yeah. interviews. We totally could do that. Yeah, I don't know. What some time... of them are still touring to this day, like separately. Who? Big time big rush. Big time rush. Yeah, I want to say. But they're not a still together, are they? They're not. No. No, because because on Dancing together? with the Stars, yeah, well, two of them were on Dancing with the Stars, but like at separate times. And didn't he like Carlos kind of turn to? weed to oh my god oh, yes that Sorry. was his thing that was so funny what? so carlos penavega was on at the same time that nick carter was on dancing with the Aww. stars and so they were trying to like make this storyline like they were, dancing with the stars was trying to build this storyline that nick and carlos were the same huh? and we're like mm, were no. they because like they were like oh they were both in boy bands and they both had like rough pasts and all this stuff and now they're like reformed and like so when big I mean, time rushes like tv show was canceled he went through this depression yeah and i mean we all okay we all know nick's kind of history and yes. like the things that he's gone through yes which is not good no um no. but and so this guy comes and he's like oh yes you know, when Big Time Rush was over and whatever, like one time he smoked marijuana no. and like Jesus came to him what? in like a hallucination. I don't think that's how what? it went. I'm sure what? that's what, what he said. I, yeah. I think he got addicted to weed, even though people oh, say that yeah. you can't. And then he went to a church and that's where he met Alexa. And then I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. It, it was, was really just like, just like forced. Huh. We're just like, oh, he's like, I turned to drugs, to weed. I'm like, Okay, so not like cocaine or anything. Not not that we're wishing cocaine upon say, anyone. Like that. But it was just, yeah, it was just a very strange. It was just like a very forced storyline, and I was like, why are you trying to make this guy like have a like past. shady past and like whatever when he doesn't actually have one? Like no clue. The fact that you smoked some marijuana when you were like twenty years old does not make it like oh, I had the hard knocks life. Like you know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. 
It's legal yeah. in our country, so it's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah, we, we're us. like, we're like and gay, although yeah. we sound high, we do actually do not <laughs> smoke <laughs> weed. So we're high on life. Yes, yeah. exactly. And boy bands. So who knows? I mean, I feel like the time is right for like a new type of like together big time rush show, don't you think? I keep telling you guys we can make our own boy band, but no one listens to me. We can use the patented Lou method. So you want to make a fake boy band or like kind of like do like do you a, want to do like a together band? fake boy band or do you want to do like a real boy band? With my luck, I would make a, a fake one that would do so well. I'm like, ah, shit. And then be like, oh, were, were you, was this the real? Old? Yes, I guess it's real. <laughs> I guess I didn't even know it was real. And the thing is now, I feel like any of the new boy bands, like the pretty much is why don't we in real life, all of them could easily like put something out on YouTube. I think in real life does do a lot but of it's, YouTube stuff. But it's more stuff. documentary style. Okay. Like it's just, it's it's more just like vlogs sort of following them when they're on tour. And okay, doing so it's, I, I like the campy, cheesy, like. I, what I would like is for it to be scripted. This is yes. what I'm saying, okay. right? Like a lot of, because even, why don't we, I think is the band that is friends with those D-bag guys. Uh, oh God! What's his name now? I can't remember. Are you talking like Logan, Logan Paul? Paul and Jake? Oh Paul. yes! Oh. And so they were like on his channel a bunch, but oh, I, I really? don't think the Jake Paul stuff is scripted, really. No, Jake Paul's not scripted. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't watch any of his He's, stuff. He's uh, very unscripted. That's gotten him in hot Which water. Which is the main problem, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of what the people are putting out, like these young boy bands, they're putting out video content, but it's just. It's all like real life stuff. Real, yeah. It's it's not Ish. scripted, planned uh, content. It's just like on Instagram and YouTube, and it's like here, follow us while we like go shoot our video or like well, whatever. Which is nice. You I know? mean, people like a more honest approach. I mean, that's why people on YouTube are successful. Are the people who are like the honest, like this is my real me, blah blah blah. So, um, if anyone could pull off a parody, probably like SNL ish. Like something where you expect it. Like, I don't know if we could organically do it and make it successful. You know what I mean? But even you, like the K-pop groups. Well, like we never ended up watching any of that BTS run thing. But so again, it's not, that... it's not, it's not, it's scripted, but it's like a reality show. Okay. I think. Like it's all planned like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like stunts and oh, okay. like. Uh, pranks. Pranks. Thank you. Um, it's not like I'm going to play a character now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're, they are themselves pulling pranks and doing all these kind of things. While we were talking about fake boy bands, it just popped in my head. My favorite fringe festival play ever was called boy groove. Yes. So I think it's one that you were in. No. No. So I was, we were in the Toronto fringe festival at that time. They actually had a small, smaller theater than us. Mm -hmm. The entire run of our thing, we didn't even fill up a quarter of our theater and they were sold out every night. So we had a 200 seat theater. They had a 100 seat theater, but because of that, and I tried to even go and get like rush tickets and they were sold out. So I like traveled to Toronto to go see them and I couldn't see the play. So, um, it was called boy groove and they ended up winning best of fringe. So there used to be a theater near the sky dome, um, called the diesel playhouse. They ended up getting a run for like. I want to say two or three months that they could perform their play like after the Fringe Festival. And I actually went three times to go see this play. Yeah. And played paid way more than I would have paid at the Fringe Festival to go see it. And it was just fantastic. So it was it was only a four member boy band instead of a five member boy band. <laughs> Non-traditional. But but, that's uh, but it was like the same basic gist of like, oh, like they got put together. They did this. They like whatever. And it was just really funny. So what's cool is a couple years ago, I ended up like I guess they had done a remake of it recently. It, a few years ago um but it was in like winnipeg so i'm like i'm not flying to winnipeg to go see this play <laughs> like i love the play but not but i ended up finding the script online and you could pay and download it so i actually have the script and i would 100 percent like to take our boy band dolls oh. and make the the show and they had a couple of songs uh one of them was you make my hips buck oh i love that song you, you make, make my, my hips buck, buck baby. baby girl, girl you drive me crazy oh shit my thighs are on fire, fire. And I got a cramp in my side. And then there was a, a couple, there was another song as well. So they had a couple of like music videos or whatever. So they had two songs. I actually downloaded them and they're fantastic. Yeah. But uh, 
I think that'd be kind of fun. And I feel like I have, like, I literally have the script in hand and I have those like boy band dolls that we haven't done anything with. Yes, we still need to so do that might be kind of a fun project to do this summer is to like literally create the play with these dolls. Or, because I feel our problem mm. is that we don't know enough good looking guys <laughs> or any guys well, that we could get thing. together to make a group. This is my thing. We put out an audition. Shinzia. Like a like a call thing? We put out we put out a, a casting call and then we rent out an airplane hangar uh-huh. and then we just have them dance with no shirts on. <laughs> Anyways, we can make this then happen. Then the police come. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it would be wonderful and I think I could pull it off. It just I need your guys' cooperation. We ha- so, first of all, we have no money to do no, this. No, well, neither did Lou. <gasps> we need to write a blimp and then crash it. Yeah, and insurance. collect the insurance money. Yes, okay. I feel we like need it's to, been done. Know, we might be fine. Learn from Lou. <laughs> we must learn from Lou. Learning with Lou. No, <laughs> a new imagine. documentary. Oh, oh, God. There's also, speaking of that Fringe Festival, that play that we went to see a couple of years oh, ago, yeah. You Want It What Way, which is a boy band tale. That was good. Like, So they had five guys, I think. Yeah, and uh, I don't remember the whole thing, but what they did was that like they took a bunch of boy band songs and put it into a play so it's like a musical Ooh. using boy band but they didn't actually sing yeah so the music would be playing and the lyrics would be on the screen and then they would be dancing to it which was like yeah. they a for effort but and i did i did enjoy the show and we were like they were dancing in the aisles at one point and stuff mm. so that was fun but um if you saw boy groove you would know that it was like it was like nothing compared to that like boy groove yeah. was amazing but like, that one is going to be at this Sears Hamilton fringe festival <gasps> what oh yeah okay i'm going to i'll go see them again cuz i actually did really enjoy it and then i kind of wanted to stay around afterwards to like talk to them and then the girls like took off cuz i think Maybe they were we going could somewhere else <gasps> <guys>. <gasps> oh my God. all right we'll reach out cuz i'm yeah they follow us on instagram yes <gasps> Awesome. Yeah. So, um, what was the call again? You want it what way? You want, you want it, it what, what way? way? They yeah. were re- they were really good, and they did like the matching outfits, and, and they, it, was, it was almost uh, like a confessional in between songs. Like they were sitting there, it was like and it a was boy band support group. I it think it was a bit like parody like as well. Good, yeah, like that love it. It was all right, but <laughs> yeah, uh, fringe festival price for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like cool. So, yeah, maybe we could do something with them. Mm, yeah, why not? Fringe Lots is of... usually in July, I think, right? I have no I idea. So. You would yeah. know better than I do. And they'd be in Hamilton, so we can just have them up to the ah. studio. Okay. And All we can right. touch them. No. Never no. mind. No. Uh, well, mm, no. When you no. S- no. Oh. We'll talk off air. Ah. All right. Okay. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> um. All right. Well. That's it. We we got a lot of good upcoming stuff, a lot of ideas. And if you have any ideas, like Tony. Thanks so much, Tony, Thank for you, that. Thank you, Tony. DM. You're the best. And I got to say, <laughs> like, there, I, I kind of stalked his Instagram, and there was a picture of him at, I think it was his birthday party with some other guys, and they were kind of, like, dressed up like a boy band. I think he had, like, a 90s-themed birthday Aww. or something like that. And I was like, that's really cool. So, Tony. Yeah. Um, but, Hello. yes, if you be like Tony and send us a message – if you have anything that you think we need to talk about on this podcast, we are um, open for all suggestions. We would love to hear your suggestions. And honestly, we want to put out content that you guys want to hear. Yes. So uh, hit us up. We, as you can tell, we will take your suggestions. Yes. For so, sure. And anything. if you have any together episodes that you want to send me, send me the link or whatever. Because... Thank you. <laughs> These girls need to, they need to appreciate the awesomeness of Together. I do have the documentary. I'm just looking for the TV show. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks for taking a break with us, guys. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.